So, you know, they came up with the same thing that commies did, it's, just, it's couched differently and it's justified differently. They came on equality. And if we're all poor and sick and ignorant, as long as we're all equally so, then it's okay. As long as there are no differences, then it's okay. Because it's wrong for one person to have something that somebody else needs. And we need everything. What don't we need? I need anything somebody else has that I don't have. So the whole debate, the whole debate over healthcare is driven by this philosophy of need, by this egalitarian notion that everybody has to be ultimately equal. And if you can attack the health care issues, you can attack the issue of socialized medicine. Yeah, you need to point out all the concretes and all the examples and all the stories of an awful socialized medicine. Is. All that is true. But it doesn't matter. It's not going to move the needle one iota unless you're willing to challenge this notion that somebody else's needs places a moral obligation on me. It places it on me and it places it on you. Then all the government is doing is forcing us to live up to our obligation. And who could be mad at them for that? They're making us better. We're better human beings for them forcing us to be moral, to be ethical. We're going to challenge socialize anything. What we have to challenge is the morality of need, the morality of selflessness, the morality that says that it's a virtue to sacrifice your life for somebody else's life. That somebody else's life is the standard by which you should live your life, which is what the morality of need implies. That's what needs to be challenged. That's what needs to be shut down completely. And it needs to be exposed for the evil that it is. It is evil. Your life is yours. Nobody has a claim against your life. You are sovereign over your life. Somebody else's need is his need, is his problem. You want to help him because you like him? Fine. You don't want to help him? It's your life. That's what freedom means. What are all the freedom fighters fighting for? That's the individual's ownership of his own life. Individual's freedom to make his own choices about what to pursue, to live his life to the fullest. So morality of need needs to be rejected. But that's not that mean morality needs to be rejected. Because that's usually the alternative to that. If you're not going to accept if your life belongs to that bomb in the corner, then you're just saying you're throwing out morality. No. Morality should be about the fact that your life belongs to you. The fact that you're not a slave to the bum in the corner, to the person who doesn't have health care. You're not their slave. We abolished slavery a long time ago. It's socialized medicine, it's slavery. It enslaves the doctors and the nurses, whoever happens to walk into their clinic and demand health care. It enslaves all of us, the taxpayers, to the needs of whoever demands health care. Whoever claims they don't have enough. Whether some bureaucrat decides not enough. That's slavery. You don't get to choose what to do with your money. You don't get to choose what to do with your time. You don't get to choose who to treat and who not to treat. That's slavery. And what happens if you say, no, I won't do it? What do they do to you? They put you in shackles and they throw you in a cell. It's called jail. That's slavery. That's what we need to fight against. And fighting against that means fighting for something. For a new morale. This is Ayn Rand's brilliance. Ayn Rand's morality of rational self interest. A morality, and it says that the purpose of morality is to figure out not how to sacrifice yourself for other people, how to live selflessly, how to live for others, but how to live the best life that you can live for you, how to make your life the most meaningful that it can be for you, how to attain real happiness, how to attain real success. And that's hard. It's not easy to know what's going to lead to happiness, what's going to lead to success, what's good for me and what's bad for me. These are complicated things. That's why you need principles. And that's what morality should be about. Figuring out what are the principles that lead to human happiness. Human individual happiness is a group happiness. So morality is about the individual. It's about what is good for that individual. What are the principles that have made you the best that you can be? 
an individual who likes to live for himself. And living for yourself, I mean, think about living for yourself. Uh, one of the clever things that the people who advocate for this morality of need and the morality of sacrifice, one of the clever things they've done is they equivocated between two things. Between being self-interested and pursuing your life and making your life the best that it can be, and what? And being a lying, cheating, mean-spirited, nasty human being. They made those two the same. Somebody shouted out selfish before, right? They made those two the same. Selfish means what? Dictionary definition. Taking care of self. Is lying, cheating, and stealing taking care of self? No. Is Bernie Madoff selfish? Anybody know Bernie Madoff is? Go slow for the two billion. From his best friends. No. Is she selfish? If selfishness means taking care of self, if selfishness means being the best that you can be for you, living the happiest, most successful life possible, was Bernie made up a selfish guy? Well, he's in jail now. His son committed suicide not too long ago because he was so ashamed of what his father had done. His father's still alive and lives with that knowledge. I think he's happy. I think he feels fulfilled. I think he feels like he's lived a full, successful life. Not a very selfish thing to do. But that's because he was caught, you might say. Some crimes you never get caught at. Well, think about this guy, Bernie made up. Let's assume he never got caught. He lies to every single person he interacts with. Because those are people he's cheating and lying about, right? He lies to his family, the people he supposedly loves. He doesn't go to sleep, ever, without thinking about if he's going to get caught tomorrow. Not by the police, but by his wife or his kids. You know who sent him in? His two sons turned him in because they finally figured out his lies. They, they called the police on their father. It's a happy, successful family, right? Any one of you want to join that one? <laughs> and you can go example after example of people who really lie, steal, and cheat. They usually get caught, but even if they don't, they live miserable, pathetic lives. It's not a strategy to live life to its fullest, it's not a strategy for success. Yet, when taught, the selfishness is lying, cheating, and stealing. That you can't separate the two. That if I am selfish, by definition, I'm going to stab you in the back. But if you really think about it, rationally, figure it out, it's not in my self interest to stab you in the back. It's in my self interest to do what? What's the one thing that leads to all the values that we have? You know, from this iPhone to the food you had, to the, you know, beautiful. Not so beautiful room we're in. <laughs> They're all products of the human mind. None of these were created. We don't have the instinct to create a night You know, really smart people sat down and figured it out. And they built on the work of lots of other smart people who figured it out. So morality is about thinking, it's about being rational, it's about figuring out what's in my self interest. Hard work. But a human being who is dedicated to that, being the best that he can be, living life to the fullest, making his own decisions, taking responsibility for his own actions, what kind of healthcare system would he want? What kind of anything would he want? One that left him free to make his own decisions. One that left him free to choose his own doctor. That's really what this is about. One that left him free to choose what drugs to take or not to take, what treatments to take or not to take. To buy insurance, or not to buy insurance, don't be sure. So instead of buying insurance, take the money and open a business. Take the risk, you get sick. No, human beings have never taken risks, right? Typically when they're young. That never happens. People sail around the world without insurance. Oh my God. <laughs> what, Columbus, what was Columbus thinking? Well, he's a villain. Uh, you know, the, the Wright brothers went up in a plane. They had no health insurance and they had no liability insurance. <laughs> and they didn't get approval from the FAA. Why did they do that? They didn't exist back then. Individuals pursuing their own self interest want to be left free. Want to be left free. And if you, if you focus in on that, then it's easy to fix the healthcare problems that we have today with the fact that it's expensive. And the solutions all are get rid of government, involvement in it, increased freedom. Increased choices.
power the marketplace, get rid of the regulations, the controls, the licensing, the subsidies, the, you know, everything that the government does to distort what a real market in healthcare is. It's going back, this is why it shouldn't be that hard in this country, because it's going back to the founding principles of the country, the real meaning of the founding principles of this country. Because this country was founded on the notion of individualism, on the notion that we are responsible for our own lives, and that flourishing and, and fulfillment it should be our goal. After all, enshrined in our Declaration of Independence, probably the most significant political statement in human history is that each one of us has an inalienable right to our own life, not to the group utility, whatever, group well-being, health care for the masses. No, you have a right to your own life, to your own living. And in the most selfish political statement in human history, each one of us has an inalienable right, which means nobody can take it away from us. Not the majority, through democracy, not government, Nobody can take it away from you. You have an inalienable right to pursue your happiness. Not the greatest good for the greatest number. Not some equality. Your happiness. And the role of government is to stay out. Is to protect you from those who would infringe on your ability to pursue your happiness. By using fists and guns on you. But not to take from you in order to provide somebody else to leave you free, to leave you alone. So if we took the principles that this country was founded upon seriously, then health care is a minor issue. It's really easy to solve. You know, if anybody wants uh, a menu of things that could be done tomorrow to make health care better, I'd be happy to provide it. But the whole principle is move towards the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Lead people free to act in their own self-interest. Thank you all.